Um, I, I love, I just love the choices you guys are making. I love everything you're doing with this franchise. I love psychologically what you're doing with your two characters in particular because there are only so many times that you can do, you know, this and, and that to move things. So is that what draws you to these characters? Is that what's keeping you so invested in the franchise? Is the development of these characters, these very complex characters and how you're portraying them? Yeah, for, for, yeah I suppose really. I mean, you've done, this is the seventh X-Men movie, I think. I think so. You've got to, you've got to change things. You've got to you've got to surprise the audience a little bit. And I think, you know, you can surprise them with different kind of spectacle, different kind of action, all that kind of thing. But really, I think what people find most interesting is the differences in characters and and showing them in situations, positions, and in states of mind that they would never have expected to see them in. And that's certainly the case for for Charles. And I, I mean, you know a bit more about Eric than I do. Can just a slight amount, just a little. I'm not a little bit. I mean, uh, <laughs> I think yeah, for uh, Eric in this film, it's um, he's just basically he's on his own really. He's through his sort of megalomania, he's isolated himself from everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, well, also he's been put in prison, so that had a little factor to play in it in isolation. <laughs> uh, and uh, but oh, when he comes uh, out, he's he knows <laughs> the troubles I know. That's what you should be saying. Uh, I have, yeah. Um, so it's uh, so he when he gets out, he's still you know he's very much more focused, more singular in his approach, more ruthless, more Machiavellian. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Was there a conversation of the Bay of Pig sequence needs to be topped at all? Uh, that wasn't a conversation that I was involved in. But were no, you involved in that no. Bay of Pigs conversation? No. <laughs> what pigs? We got to top that this. Is, uh, yeah. No, I wasn't there. But that oh, seems to be the sequence that like people point to of like you know the, this is one of the biggest action sequences we've seen, and this one goes bigger. And that, I guess that's part of my fear too. Like you're tackling the biggest story that X Men fans have been holding on to for so long. Is it in the back of your mind of how do we top this? How do we go bigger each time? Because we know X Men Apocalypse is coming. It's not really important to me to go bigger. No, it's just me important to go consistently interesting. Right. Better. Um, <laughs> it's what you do with it, not necessarily the size of your film it's how you more on a slippery slope here it's how you how you how you <laughs> it's how you manipulate no you, no no maneuver 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 i like that um, i think fans would like to just know um primarily where the post-apocalypse stuff was shot where did you guys shoot all that and did it take a long time to film um well we shot it you know in a green you know on a in a big studio in Montreal, mm -hmm. and um, we also shot that sort of alt bunker sequence at the beginning in Moscow. Was shot actually in the old Olympic Stadium, like under the rafters in Montreal, which was really cool, actually. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <sighs> so that's where we did all that. Oh, yeah. Cool. cool. Um, without talking about specifics at the end of the film, there's closure. It feels. Um, there's a scene that that sort of puts a bow on everything, with, while still opening up a door. Without talking about it too specifically, I want to know if, if if Brian were the only one that could have really filmed that. Like if it, if it brought a certain sense of kismet to have him Absolutely. presiding over that. Absolutely. Absolutely, in this way. We, we had got the creative, the original creative spirit in charge of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, the, the, the individual who created that first scene in the first movie, the scene at the gates of the uh, concentration camp, mm -hmm. um, and which set a tone for that film and indeed for everything that came afterwards. Um, to have that same creative talent uh, with us in Montreal and elsewhere was exactly what this film needed. Mm -hmm. So uh, with someone else, it would have been very different. Um, I have to ask, is, is Magneto Quicksilver's father? Yes. Yes? Good, I'm done. Thank you very much. Excellent. Excellent. See, sometimes you have to ask. Thanks, man. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you.